I would like to welcome you to the session, a proper installation of large and small diameter mechanical joints. Um, I'm pretty excited. There's a lot of demo equipment here for this presentation. I think you'll enjoy. Our presenters are uh, Jeff Phillips and Craig Sloan, and they both work for Star Pipe Products. Jeff Phillips is a registered professional engineer with over 20 years experience in the water and wastewater industry. He's worked for municipalities as consultants as well as manufacturers. He's currently the regional engineer for Star Pipe Products. Craig Sloan, I think, has uh, years and years in the industry, and he's 20 years. He's Western Canada's territory manager. So welcome both. We look forward to the presentation. And just one note for you guys. Um, we're taking questions for this presentation throughout the presentation. So if you have a question or idea, just type it in your screen and we'll ask as we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, uh, EOCP, for setting this up. I know it's not easy in, in these times. Um, so we'll get going here. It'll be our first presentation with no live audience to really speak of. So it'll be, be a little interesting here. <laughs> um, we're going to go through it. We'll do a demo at the end. But as Anna said, ask questions as we, uh, as we go through. And as I'm talking, these are all our star products. I'm going to keep it generic as I can. Occasionally, I have to refer to something when it's relevant, but generally I'll refer to serrated restraints rather than a product name or a wedge action restraint. So this will be, th this is for anybody's fitting or restraint. Um, so it's, that's it. So today's presentation, we're gonna go over quick little introduction. Uh, you, you've met Craig and I, so if you wanna know more, type your question in, we'll tell you more. Uh, I'll tell you who Star is a bit, uh, then I'm gonna go over how Fittings are manufactured a little bit, standards, uh, fitting options that are out there, MJ connection options that are out there, how to do a tight connection if you need to do a tight connection, flexibility, as well as the demonstration at the end. The first part of the demonstration, we're going to be having slides as well as the demo. Craig's going to be doing most of that. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I'll get in and help out as well, and it's we're going to do four or five different connections on yeah. different types of pipe as well as uh, the quick connect so or MJ100 is what we call it. So introduction, I said I'm Jeff Phillips, 20, 25 years experience in various areas. Craig Sloan, same thing. Same thing, yeah. Um, we both cover Western Canada. I actually do Western US when borders open up again as well, but right now my territory shrunk, so it's quite nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Star itself, we're fairly large in the states. We're, we're generally number one or two in the states and, and eastern Canada. In western Canada, we don't have the presence as elsewhere. So if you don't know who we are, that's fair enough because we haven't been out here that much. We, we make fittings and joint restraints. Our background was castings, but now our bread and butter is the fittings and, and restraints. So that's the introduction. That's who we are. Yeah. Now we get on to the real presentation. So design, manufacturing, and how the product gets to you. When fittings or restraints are designed, we use up-to-date software. So we're using the, the most advanced software that's out there to make sure that we meet pressure ratings. It'll work. It won't twist. We check bolts. So, so we'll use AutoCAD and whatnot. We'll also use a finite element analysis to make sure that stresses are what they're supposed to do. We'll beef up areas that need beefing up. We'll let a little less material go in other areas if it's allowable. We want to make sure you get the most economical fitting you or restraint you could get, but that it will meet all the requirements of all the standards that are out there. We'll also do, and this is other manufacturers as well, uh, 3D printing of the fitting after it's made. We want to make sure that just because in theory tolerances are there, that in practice it'll work. We don't want you to get a get a fitting on on site and then find out that you can't get a bolt in there because it, it hits the uh, 
hits a bell or something there. So that's why we do a 3D printing of, of every fitting we make, just to make sure that tolerances and clearances and everything are there. Um, we have various uh, manufacturing facilities and other people too. The two main areas, fittings and joint restraints are manufactured are in China or domestically in North America here. As STAR, we actually own a facility in China and we own a facility in in Kansas, I believe it is. Uh, Coffeeville, Oklahoma. Coffeeville, Oklahoma. Kansas, Coffeeville, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. They're side by side. Mm -hmm. So once we manufacture it, we actually have to get it to you out in the distrib out in the uh, operator's world. So how we do that is from the manufacturing facility, we send it to distribution centers. Those distribution centers will then send it to the end user or the distributor such as whoever you want to pick out here. For us, we actually have 14 distribution centers across North America. Other mm -hmm. manufacturers will locate there strategically however they want. Our idea was to make sure that nothing is more than one day away. Yeah. We also work on packaging, and this is a, a key thing you want to make sure when you're getting stuff is that whoever you're getting it from packages it accordingly so it's easy to get at because inevitably you will want whatever's on the bottom of that pallet. How it can be done and how we do it is we put pallets at each level so if you do need that bottom one you just use forklift take it off you don't have to dump everything off it just you want to make sure you don't damage your fitting or restraint or whatever the product you're getting you don't want to damage it before you use it, just trying to get out another product. Jump in if you have I was else. just going to say the other part of it is oftentimes, <coughs> depending on the distance of the ship, uh, you might end up with some things on, you know, tilting. We, we ensure that the way we package, the way we structure our, our building of the pallet, uh, you will get it exactly like the picture shows. It'll be square, straight, and leveled off perfectly, and like he said, very accessible depending on what you want. You're, no, you're not digging, you're just <coughs> pulling layers apart to get what you need. So it's definitely very, uh, uh, exactly like the pictures, it's just like that when it shows up, depending on anywhere in the, in the North American property. And if it doesn't look like that, look at the product a little more carefully to make sure shipping, it didn't get damaged, because mm -hmm. stuff happens during shipment. Lars is wrapped in blue, as you can see here, and that's an indicator. If it's not like that when it shows up, it may have been pulled apart or looked at at customs, and, uh, and that's <laughs> always good to note that maybe the shipment has, has been uh, just examine or what have you, and um, you want to make sure everything still is there properly and the way it was, and uh, contact us in any case yeah. if it isn't. Contact the manufacturer if, if something doesn't look right yeah. or deal with the shipping. I can go back a couple of slides here. I forgot to mention, at the manufacturing facility also, we, we do QA, QC. So the bottom left-hand picture there is making your mold that you're fittingly poured into. Top left-hand is pouring molten ductile iron into the fitting, yeah. and the right-hand picture is where some of the QA, QC is done. So we'll test metallurgy, we'll test uh, tolerances, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So got to make sure what you're getting is what you ordered. Now we go back to here. And then you, as an end user, you're not going to order direct from a manufacturer. As manufacturers, we're specialized. Star, we specialize in fittings and restraints. Other manufacturers specialize in hydrants or in pipe or in whatever. So you're going to want to go to a local distributor who has all of those. They bring us manufacturers together. They're your one-stop shop. So, so you don't buy direct from us. You, you, you'd buy from one of your choice of, uh, of distributors, whoever you work with locally. Standards. There's not a lot of standards involved in uh, mechanical joints or the joint restraints that go with them, but the ones that are relevant are AWWA, ASTM, NSF, and in BC, MMCD. AWWA, it's going to be the C-153 or the C-110 standard. Those are your standards for your ductile iron fittings. Mm -hmm. ASTM is referred to quite often in the AWWA standards, so you're not going to see ASTM standards very often, but they're referred to in the other standards. The most important one you want to look out for is the NSF. Anything in contact with drinking water, and I'm sure you know this already, has to be NSF 61 certified. 
So our fittings, the inside of them, whatever coating we put on has to meet NSF 61. Joint restraints, we don't care if it meets NSF 61 because it goes on the outside of the fitting or the outside of the pipe, so it doesn't need to meet it. Yeah, it's not in contact with wetted. Yeah, there we go. This slide doesn't show it on mine, but on yours it should show two pictures of fittings there. On those fittings, it will say the manufacturer. So the picture on the left should show, it shows star for our fitting there. That one also should say FM rated on it. And it will also, um, the right hand picture will be showing NSF 61 on it. It says it's a 90 degree bend, four inch, and it also shows, or the left one is showing the C-153 standard as well as the 350 PSI pressure rating. So everything you need to know is on that fitting. So make sure when the fitting for restraint or pipe or whatever you've ordered shows up, it's actually what you wanted. Fitting options. There's a number of them. We've got, as I said, AWWA, C110 and C153. C110 came out in the 50s. It was based on cast iron uh, properties. It's a bigger fitting. It's got more material in it because it, it's physically bigger. It's thicker. Uh, C153 came out in the mid 80s. It was based on ductile iron standards. So it, incorporated the different material properties of ductile iron. So you're able to get a more compact fitting, thinner wall, but the same pressure rating. So the C110, although it's bigger and thicker, isn't a better fitting, it's just a different fitting. They both do exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, you also have push-on fittings, flange fittings, or mechanical joint fittings. C Mechanical joint fittings are about 85 to 90% of North America uses them. Yeah. C-153 fittings, 90 to 95% of North America uses them rather than C-110. BC is the anomaly. Push-on fittings are used more often here. More and more municipalities are switching over to mechanical joint fittings. As I said, it, it's the standard that's used across North America. So. Lucky me, I get BC, which is the anomaly, and a couple pockets in California are the anomaly that use the push-on fittings. But I'm we'll, a, we'll I, do that as a different presentation another time. I was going to jump in and just say that the, the larger diameter almost always goes to the MJ yeah. version as well. Yeah, the push-on only go up to 24 inch, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Flange fittings are used for above ground applications. AWWA standards actually say do not use a flanged fitting in a below buried installation, it just doesn't have any flexibility. The mechanical joint and the push-on joint give you flexibility so it can handle differential settlement of, of soils. Um, you got that for that one. Utility fittings, this is just pictures. So there's an example of your flange fitting, your push-on fitting, your mechanical joint fitting. Here's the difference between your C110 and your C153 fitting. I said they both have the same pressure rating. Your C-153 is more compact than your C-110. Sometimes before, because it's more compact, what you need to do is the bottom hole where a bolt would go is going to be a slot rather than a hole. So your, your T-bolt will slide up into it because there isn't areas for it to, to bend around and, and go in. And that's the sort of stuff we look for when we do the 3D printing of a of a fitting is we want to make sure that it's going to fit in there and if it doesn't we make it a slot rather than a hole and that's pretty standard in the industry. Here's your mechanical joint components so this is what we're going to be putting together when we do the yep. demo here. So on the right you've got your bell that's either going to be a bell of a pipe, bell of a fitting, it, it's a bell whether it's C-153 or C-110 that MJ bell is the same bell. It's got the same dimensions. It's identical. It doesn't matter which standard it's made to, whether it's on pipe, whether it's on fitting, it's the same bell. The black piece in there is your gasket. That's what does your ceiling. You've got a gland in there, which is the gray part on the, the left. That's just a plain gland. I don't have one here, but it's 
it's basically the front half of this fitting, so it's just that gland. You can also get a restrained gland, which is what this is, so it's got a built-in restraint on it as well. When you tighten that T-bolt, which is up top, that compresses that gasket, that's how you get your sealing. Depending on the diameter of the pipe, the material of the pipe, whether it's ductile iron, PVC, HDPV, or HDPE, or uh, PVCO, what torque you tighten those T-bolts to, and it's very crucial you don't over tighten it. Just because it says 110 doesn't mean you put 150 foot pounds of torque on it. Mm -hmm. If you over compress it, it depends on the material it is, what will happen, but generally it's not good. If you over compress it and you've got a ductile iron pipe into a ductile iron fitting, that gasket is gonna try squeezing out through one of the openings. I don't know how big your screen is, but if you zoom in, you can see that there's little spaces between the gland and the bottom of the pipe and the fitting, it will try squeezing out through there. It'll rip, you'll get a leak. If it's a plastic pipe, it's a PVC or an HDPE, that, that? Uh, that, that gasket will compress and it will make a indentation in the pipe basically and you'll most likely get a leak there. If it's a PVCO, it'll even compress that pipe more and it's even more likely you'll get a get a leak. So depending on what the material is, follow the torque, torque settings. And it's all written right on it. I think we have an example somewhere. When a, when a restraint shows up, it will tell you what the torque is. There's a tag that comes with it that tells you what the torque is. Yeah. Um, when we do the demo, we'll find one. We I know got, we've got one kicking around I've here. I've got somewhere. one right here. It's actually zip, it's strapped right to the actual uh, the eyelet here, so they, they'll all come with this. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, we'll, we'll show it more. Yeah, once we do the demo, we'll, we'll get into to showing it more. And I've got a good picture on why you don't over torque coming up in a little while here. Uh, accessories, as I said, the T-bolt. T-bolt is what holds your, your gland or your restrained gland onto your, your fitting and compresses that gasket. You can use a variety of different bolts. You can use your HSLA, which is your standard bolt. You can use a fluoropolymer coated bolt. It's a Xylan coated, we call ours star blue. Uh, or you can use a stainless steel bolt. Stainless steel 304, 316, they're all available. You just have to check, check what box you want and it'll show up and you'll get what you want. Generally, you don't want to phone me and ask me what kind of bolts you want because it's very site specific. I don't know the details of the site you're going into, so I don't know the corrosion that you're dealing with or non-corrosion or whatever chemical you're dealing with. The design engineer will specify what bolt they want. If they want a stainless steel, they'll spec stainless steel. Most of the time, it's just going to be your standard HSLA bolt. And you can tell if it's 304 or 316 by the color of the, uh, of the nut. One's green, one's red. Gasket is the other crucial component of this. Your standard MJ gasket is designed for a cast iron OD pipe. Cast iron OD pipes are gonna be your ductile iron pipe and your C900 PVC pipe and some HDPE pipe. The other type of pipe diameter regimen that's out there is a steel pipe regimen, which is going to be your steel pipe your Schedule 40, Schedule 80, IPS, uh, PVC pipe, and again, some HDP pipe. Mm -hmm. And there's a significant difference in diameter. The larger you get, the bigger the differential is. For instance, 12-inch C900 pipe, which is a CIOD pipe, has an OD of 13.2 inches. 12-inch IPS, or Schedule 40 PVC pipe, has an OD of 12.75 inches. Mm -hmm. So if you use the standard gasket on a Schedule 40 PVC pipe, you'd have about a quarter inch of annular space between that gasket and the pipe. There's no way those T-bolts will torque up enough to compress that gasket and cover that pipe. So you have to switch to a transition gasket. What's and Craig here? can show you, um, use that one. Yeah. He, he'll put it on this pipe and th this is, that's well, an IPS. You. So this is, this, is, this is the transition one here, just to show you that the gasket should never be this easy, so that'll tell you right there, right, that we got the wrong one. So that's just your standard 
uh, PVC gasket, basically. Yeah. This is the one we're going to use. We're going to lube this up. Um, we're we'll put it on after, yeah. but. But uh, putting this on, you should have some pushback or some, you're going to have to really work to get that on. Yeah. We're going to lube the side and the inside of this gasket, but it should be snug a yeah. bit. It, it shouldn't just yeah. slide over like the standard gasket does. If it does, yeah. you know you have the wrong gasket and yeah. you will never get a seal. So. Mm -hmm. And this picture kind of just demonstrates that. It's just too big, you won't get a seal. I could talk more about it, but I think you get the idea. Yeah. Gasket materials, there's various materials. Standard material is going to be an SBR gasket. You can get an EPDM gasket, a nitrile, neoprene, Viton. Again, the material of the gasket is going to depend on the fluid going through the pipe. If you're just using water or wastewater, standard SBR gasket will be good in majority of installations. Your temperature of your fluid going through your pipe is also going to determine what gasket you want. Exterior conditions could determine what gasket you want to use. If you're going through contaminated soil, you probably want to switch out to a nitrile or a Viton gasket. But again, the design engineer has to make those calls because I don't know the specific soil conditions. I don't know the levels of concentration of the of the contaminants in there. So who's ever doing the design will spec the gasket. Make sure the gasket that's specced is what shows up on site. Because if, if for some reason they've specced a nitrile gasket, there's a reason for it. If you put the SBR or EPDM gasket in there, over time it, it's gonna lead to, to contaminants getting in, into your water system. For flange fittings, there's two styles of gaskets. There's a standard flat gasket or there's a special gasket. The AWWA standards list a flange fitting as a 250 PSI pressure rating up to 24 inch. There's a caveat in that standard though that says if you use a special gasket, that fitting magically is now a 350 PSI fitting, even though it says 250 PSI on it. What gives it the extra pressure rating, the fitting could always handle it. It was always, the pressure rating for flange fittings was always based on the gasket that was used. The material could always handle with safety factor of 350 or higher PSI. The bottom two gaskets in that slide, you can see there's little ridges on them or a bulbous area on them. That allows for more compression to happen. That's how you get your higher pressure rating for your, uh, for your gaskets there. So just because it has 250 PSI on a flange fitting, if you use the right gasket, you get 350 PSI. Yeah. That's an important thing for inspectors especially to know because I've had numerous calls that have said, that, look, it's a three, supposed to say 350 on the fitting. No, it doesn't say 350 on the fitting. The fitting in the standards has to say 250 on it. So if you ever have that problem, have them call me. This is just an example of a push-on fitting. Um, I said for BC, this is the this is the standard in most municipalities. In there's only a few that do MJ. Yeah, yeah there, there's a few, but there it is growing. Mm -hmm. There's various coatings you can get on. This is a standard asphaltic coating. This goes on the inside and outside of the fitting. It is an NSF 61 coating. Uh, that's what, unless someone orders something else, is that's what's going to show up. It's a nice black fitting. It looks just like like that. Um, I said, doesn't matter if it's us or anybody's, that's, that's what's coming. It's the standard, yeah. It, it's your standard asphaltic coating. Yeah. Another coating you can do is get a zinc coated fitting. This is becoming more and more popular. The ductile iron pipe guys are pushing zinc coated pipe. So the zinc coated fitting is a logical add on to that zinc coated pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two different ways to make zinc coated fittings. You can use ISO 8179 part one or part two. I know that's really exciting, but uh, what it really means is it's an arc spray is part one or just a paint or brush on is part two. Mm -hmm. For pipe, arc spray works great. It's a nice continuous length. It's easy, it's economical, it's efficient to do that method for pipe. For fittings, the more efficient method to do it and the more even coat is a brush or spray on. So you, you brush the coating on, you get the same concentration of zinc on the fitting, but because there's intricacies in the fitting, you've got these, you've got tight corners there, 
the arc spray doesn't guarantee it gets everywhere as well as a brush on. We can do both methods, it depends what's in the spec, but your better option is to go with your brush on. Yeah. Um, the fitting is gonna look identical. If I held this zinc coated fitting up like this and the standard fitting up like this, you're not gonna know the difference. What the, how you can tell and the only way to know is because that same asphalt coating that goes on this fitting goes on top of the zinc coated fitting. So on a zinc coated fitting, generally in yellow, it's going to say zinc coated or some terminology like that. For ours, it actually just says zinc coated. The TN9098 is the paint we use, the zinc rich paint that we use um, for ours. Other manufacturers will have it labeled slightly different, but it will be the same general idea. Mm. It will be an obvious paint, but if you didn't have that paint on there, you couldn't tell if it was a zinc coated fitting or a, or a standard asphalt coated fitting. Mm -hmm. and I said those are, that they're not uncommon right now, but they're becoming more, more popular. So it's something to keep your eyes out for. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a question. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Can you talk about pipe ovality? Pipe ovality. Yes, I can. That's coming up uh, in a couple slides. So, so yeah, we're we're gonna get into the re-rounding. Uh, wh why you want to make sure a pipe is re-rounded? I'm not gonna tell you how to re-round it. That's the pipe guy's job to do. Kind of. I, I can give you some ideas, and when we get to that point, I'll. I'll mention it, but uh, yeah, you have to check it when you put it together. The other coating is FBE coatings, um, which is a fusion bond epoxy. Mm -hmm. It's that red one there, shiny. Um, it, depending on what the application is, again, the, the designers will, will tell you, do you want a standard fitting, do you want a zinc coated fitting, or do you want an epoxy coated fitting? Yeah. The epoxy coating, again, is NSF 61 because the epoxy goes inside and outside of that fitting. So it has to be an NSF 61 yeah. uh, rated coating. Yeah, rated, what is it, six to eight mils of, yeah. the, of thickness is the general AWA spec, I believe, for the coating thickness. Yeah. Um, which we, we can do, we do these both in China and in, in Houston. In Houston, yeah. yeah. Um, linings. If you're going on to a force main, you don't want your standard cement mortar lining on the inside. It doesn't work well with, uh, with the gases that are, are in a force main, a sewer system. So you'd switch to something like a Protecto 401, which is just, we, we buy it third party. That's your standard one that the various manufacturers will use to put on the inside of the pipe. It is not NSF 61 certified, so do not use Protecto 401 coat lined pipe in a water pipeline. Fitting specs, this is just an example. This is our sheet, but other manufacturers have similar. When you fill out the spec sheet of what, or your, the order sheet of what you want, you check off, okay, I want a zinc coated fitting, I want C153, I need this size. So you fill in all the appropriate spots there, and with any luck, you get what you ordered. <laughs> if not, it's someone else's fault, not luck. mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, MJ connection options. This is a big part of what we're gonna be demoing here, so. Mm. Most of the presentation here is actually gonna be, the time is gonna be on here, so. Um, for PVC, you've got wedge action options there, I said, the wedge action for PVC, if Craig can hold that up. Yeah. Industry standard is they're red. Uh, if it's a wet, red and it's wedge action, it's for PVC. If it's not red, don't use it on PVC. It's for a different material. Yeah. Unless it's orange, then it's for PVC as well. But we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. We're going to talk about this one soon. In a minute here, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's about it for, for that. Yeah, this, one, this one's an epoxy coated version one. Yeah, that's epoxy coated. We have, we have coated. a standard one as well. That's a, it's yeah. still a red. It's just, um, and then the black would be for ductile iron. Yeah, so the black ones, uh, wedge action ones, are, are ductile iron, as Craig said right there. Mm -hmm. That's going to be like this one here. 
we just preassembled a few things to make it a little easier for later for yeah. us. Um, the wedges on a ductile iron one are harder than a PVC one, so a PVC one won't bite into the, the ductile iron or the steel, depending on what you're putting it on. Mm -hmm. The Is up to 12 inch, the PVC one can be used for C900, your CIOD, or your IPS. And again, this is ours and everyone else's in the industry. It's all the same. If yeah. you're using it for an IPS, a steel pipe size, there are washers you need to remove. Depending on the manufacturer, yeah. what the washer is, ours you pop out, other ones you, like on the orange we'll show you, you have to actually remove the bolt and remove a physical washer. So yep. if it is going on a Schedule 40 type pipe, you have to make sure you remove it because that diameter is smaller, it won't go in there. Mm -hmm. If you're putting a ductile iron one on a steel pipe, which it can be used, there's no washers to remove in there. And that's just because the material is hard enough that these break off nuts will just break off when you uh, tighten it up hard enough. The plastic pipe, the PVC, it it's not tight enough. You can keep tightening it down. So if those washers weren't in there, you'd penetrate the wall of a C900 pipe and you'd stress that pipe. And over time, it could lead to a failure um, yeah. because depending on the diameter, you could actually quite exceed how far you go in. Yeah, you would hourglass the pipe or, yeah. or narrow the pipe. Oh, another question came up. Can you read that? I'll try to, yeah. Where are we here? Since, sorry. Just read it out. Since, as you said, C-153 compact standard, uh, sorry, trying to read it out, took advantage of the higher material strength of ductile iron versus cast iron, are there any reasons C-110 would be selected for ductile iron instead of C-153? Which costs more? I'll let Craig answer the cost one. <laughs> I deal on technical, I don't know price of anything, so C110 versus C153, what, what's the cost differential? You know, it's, it's not so much the cost differential, but it, the availability factor is, is the big push. If, I don't know if you can see me. But no. uh, the big push would be the C153 is more readily, uh, readily available. Uh, therefore, you know, in many cases, we can, we can accommodate better with a C153 product. Uh, Cost-wise, C153 is generally less than the C110 from us. I'm not going to give any numbers out, but uh, I mean, that's basically how it goes. Um, it's, it's just, especially if it's MJ, we've got a lot more of it in North America. It's, it's easily to move it around and get it to places, so the costing, pricing, and quoting is definitely better and, and more advantageous to go C-153 over C-110. Um, the products, they both perform well. Yeah, they, both, they both work. The, the yeah. only reason I've seen why some people use C-110 over C-153 is because on occasion cities are slow to uh, change standards, and that C110 has always been in there, and the C153 just has, for whatever reason, not made it in the standard. There's no technical reason not to use a C153. If I'm designing, and before I worked for a fitting manufacturer, I'd have always gone to a C153 fitting. Mm -hmm. And as Craig said, it's because it's available. So you've got more options in that yeah. readily available. There's no lead time. You can go to your local distributor. They will have it on the shelf. Yeah, certain certain municipalities and <coughs> cities have comfort zones, and they, they they say if it's working, why would we change it? There, there is that aspect as well. That's what I mean. Um, but yeah, in, in our in our opinion, if you want it, if you want more of it, if you want it quick to show up. That's what you want. Is you want to go see one fifty three. Yeah. And that's because, as I said, ninety ninety five percent of North America is C one fifty three. There's a few standouts, and I mean, everyone has their reason, so. But from a technical point of view, there is absolutely no reason not to use C-153. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to joint restraints for holding your, your mechanical joint on. There are dual use ones. Uh, there's a serrated one, which is two half shells. I generally would not recommend that for a mechanical joint because it's a lot more difficult. There's a lot more processes to do it. I'll go over what they are in a little bit here, but it's, it's not your best option to use. You can use a wedge action one, a dual action wedge action. Industry standard is to make them orange. If it's orange, it can be used on PVC, PVCO, ductile iron, steel, HDP. It's your multi-purpose. So if you want 
one thing on your shelf in stores, your best bet is to go for, for one of these uh, four orange. Four to 12 inch, basically. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, it's only for the smaller diameters, but it's, yeah. it, it's a majority of pipe that's out there, your four to 12 inch. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you just don't keep dual inventories if you're using, using dual pipe. Exactly. You don't need dual inventory. Now on this one, if you're using it on steel pipe, unlike the black one on ductile iron pipe, you would have to remove the uh, washers so it could get down and, and bite in yeah, we've tight already enough. We've removed a few. We'll show you how to remove yeah. that washer after, but there are washers, and that's just because it can be used on the plastic pipe as well. I don't think we have a cent. That's the one thing we missed was the serrated. I think I might have one in the uh, in my case right there. Which one do you mean? The, uh, the serrated. The 1100? The 1100, yeah. yeah. So if we can grab that. Grab and then for mechanical joints, if you want to do a tight turn, there's something that been around for years. It's been called the uh, Foster Adapter. No, the other, other case, case over there, I think. Right, right behind there. Um, it's called a Foster Adapter. We call ours an MJ100. Basically, the guys who invented it, their patent ran out a couple years ago. They were a smaller company out of the southern US, and they marketed it in that area. They didn't get great market penetration, even though it's a really good product. So what happened when their patent ran out? us and other manufacturers came up with it. So what it does is it's basically it's a, it's a two little pipe stubs kind of that you put between and we're gonna show you how you put it together. And it allows you to put mechanical joint fitting to mechanical joint fitting and you get a nice tight. So if, you're, if you have space restraints or you don't wanna cut a little stupid spool of pipe, this is a great option mm -hmm. to go with. Yeah, quick, quick turns or changes on the job site will get calls all the time. It's a solution product. And a lot of the times they didn't see something coming or whatever and they exactly. have to do a quick turn. And, and this they can achieve, well, as you'll see in, in these connections, which we've already got done, um, you can definitely get some quick movement around obstacles. And, and they're available up to 36 inch. So it's not like you're, you can only use these on the smaller diameter. Also works well in valve chambers and stuff where you definitely have size constraints. Yeah. This is the example of the dual use, the serrated restraint. It comes yeah. in two halves, it bites on it, but in order to uh, keep that out, because we'll show yeah. when we get to the demo why, how much more of a hassle it is to use that for a mechanical joint. It's doable, it's just a pain. It's not recommended, yeah, we'd go the yeah. other way. I'd, I'd go with the wedge action every day. It's yeah. got the built-in gland, this you need a separate gland with it. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have, we don't have a sample here, is if you, uh, and other manufacturers have it as well, if you need more flexibility in a system, if it's for a seismic or you expect movement, a bridge crossing, whatever, they, you can get a flexible expansion contraction joint. I've got the sample in there. Craig, talk for a second, I'm gonna grab this. <laughs> About the flex joints or? No, anything. <laughs> Well, basically, we're, we're getting close to the part where I get to do some stuff. I've been just standing here watching Jeff talk most of the time. Yeah. I'm going to be getting ready boring. to set this up. Well, it depends on who you are, I guess. But uh. So as you can tell, this probably isn't what you'd put in your system because it's just 3D printed, but it allows for expansion, contraction, you know, single or double ball joint on it. It just allows for complete movement. Mm -hmm. um, we call ours a Series 5000. Other people call theirs other names, but they, just so you know, these are out there, there's few manufacturers who make them. It's a great system if you expect flexibility, if you're connecting to a water tower or anything, any critical part that if there's movement, you do not want it to fail. Yeah. These come in handy. They're available up to 48 inch. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we so definitely they, have more and more concerns with seismic activity that this is the way we're going. A lot of municipalities, a lot of cities are looking at this as options to uh, just protect the system, basically. Yeah, exactly, and they can be a flanged or an MJ connection. So I said, we're not gonna demonstrate that, just to let you know that like the MJ100 and the, the flexible expansion joint, they're out there, they're options for you. Yeah. You could also just get it as, a, as an expansion joint or as a ball joint, like you pick which configuration you want. Mm -hmm. Let us or whomever know. Now we're gonna get into the demonstration. The first part of the demonstration, we're gonna have slides as well as Craig doing, doing the work. The second part, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be his uh, grunt worker and 
we'll, we'll do it on the various pipes. So we're gonna show you how to put a PVC IPS pipe, so with the transition gasket and everything, mm -hmm. we're gonna use a ductile iron pipe, we're gonna use the multi-use on both materials, so you can see the difference, how you install it on both. We're gonna show you how to put an MJ100 or a, or a foster adapter into a system to get that tight turn, and we're gonna show you a C900 pipe and what you need to do with that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it doesn't repeat itself. As I said, we did, last night we, we came and we put some stuff together and gaskets on so we don't have to show you exactly everything over and over again because it would get boring for us, let alone you. There we go. So first step is we'll talk quickly about push-on fittings. I got two slides on this, then we go to the other. And there's two key things I want to bring up on a push-on fitting. Um, Push on fittings, you're normally gonna use the, here, can you put that, that? The, a lot of times you'll use this serrated one with a push on fitting. Some manufacturers are bi-directional, some are unidirectional. This is an example of a unidirectional one. When you put it on the pipe, your, your fittings over here, your rods go through here, you wanna make sure your nuts go on against the a flat part. If you yeah. try tightening a nut against a angled part, your nut will not tighten up properly. We've seen it installed wrong numerous times. That's regardless of fitting or restraint or whatever. You not always have to go against a flat part. There's yeah. one instance that it doesn't. We've got that'll come up later, and we'll show you what you do in that case. Yeah, ours is different in the way that it does ramp on that one side, so you really can't assemble it properly. You'll know right away if it has been put on incorrectly at first and yeah. you'll, you'll switch it automatically. Um, and that's often a concern with directional, whereas you know if the lugs look the same on either side, we've got it stamped all over it, bolt side, the nut side, the whole thing. Yeah, this says nut side right there on it, that's a good point, and this yeah. one should say this side towards fitting. Yeah, yeah. pipe. Yeah, towards bell. Yeah. That's what it says, that's okay, it that's, say, yeah. yeah, in case you're going pipe to pipe, so. Yeah, because there's some concerns about that, but uh, ours, ours does alleviate all those concerns. Yeah. Now four to 12 inch, these have two lugs. On four to eight inch, they have four lugs on 10 and 12. So the 10 and 12 is gonna have one, two, three, four. Four to 12 inch fittings, most of the time, have two lugs on them. So four to eight, these two ears match the two lugs on the fitting, everybody's happy, full pressure rating in the pipe system, no problem. 10 and 12, if your fitting only has two lugs on it, you can only use two of the ears on the restraint. As I said, I don't have the larger one because they're just more cumbersome to carry around. So you have to cut your pressure rating for your 10 and 12 inch pipes in half. And that's us, that's every manufacturer. It depends on whose literature reading how it's written. How we write ours is we reduce it right in our literature. It says for 10 and 12, if you're at a 200 PSI pipe, you're now derated on your plastic pipe to 100 PSI on 10 and 12. And that's just because of the number of lugs on that fitting. Don't match up with the number of ears on the restraint. So if you're using half, you cut it in half. Other manufacturers will write it something like this. Other guys will write it like this, but we all say the same thing. If you don't use all the rods, you don't get the full pressure rating. So it's, it's something that a lot of people don't realize. It's something you need to keep in mind though. Because 10 and 12, 10 not so much in use, but 12 is very common pipe size out there. Push on fitting, you're not getting the full rating that you think you're getting. So if there's a premature failure, it's something to take into consideration. Wedge actions, this is where, this is where Craig gets to start having some fun. <laughs> so we're gonna go over how to install it. As I said, some of the slides, we're gonna step aside, do some commentary on it as we're doing it. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, Craig's just gonna start putting it together and you get to listen to him instead of me a little bit, which will be a nice, nice change of pace, I'm sure, for you. Yeah, guys. take a break. So, um, no, not yet. Not yet? Well, not yet. Like Supposed to we got another. We got another a slide, and then you this, year, this is just an example of how it's in installed. This is just a trick, Craig. There. Now Craig can talk. 
Oh, now I can talk. Now you can talk. Can I say what I'm going to do? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make sure all surfaces are lubed so that these things do go together. As I touched on before, you want to make sure you got the right. This is an IPS size, so it's not the same diameter outside diameter as the PVC. So you're going to want to make sure you have a transition gasket for this so that's nice and snug. And uh, like I demonstrated before with that one, it should go on snug. It shouldn't just drop right down. So <coughs> what we're going to do, if you can pass me the Oh, there we go, the lube and this stuff here. We're going to make sure all surfaces are done that way. We've already put a reference line. Usually it's about two, in, two and a half inches to get in for reference. And so that'll change sure depending on diameter, but I believe, I know four through 12 is two and a half inches. I forget which it goes up to. It gets a little deeper as you get larger and larger diameter, but uh, the smaller diameter is all two and a half inch. And that's fittings, that's C110 or C153 fittings, that's, uh, the MJ bell is an MJ bell. Uh, it's, it's dictated right in the standards, what size is. There we go. Instructions are available on manufacturers' websites on how to do this. It's a step-by-step -step process. Also, when, it, when the restraint comes, it comes with a tag, ours does, and most manufacturers do. Here, you can see on this one, there's the tag. It will tell you exactly step by step how to do it. And on the back side, it tells you torques to uh, torque it down to. Craig Lube so what I've done is I've got it all, as you can see, I don't know if you were watching, but I did get it on quite easily once we had the surfaces ready to go and lubed up. Uh, I've got the gasket, the pipes in the way it's supposed to be, and we're going to basically slide on the restraint. This is our 4300. It's the universal one that works on ductile iron, PVC, as Jeff said, Binax as well. We're going to pop this on just like that. Yeah. And, and when he lubed it up, he lubed up the pipe, he lubed up the inside and outside of the gasket, and he lubed up the gasket pump of the restraint. You want to make sure there's lubrication everywhere because yeah. that gasket has to slide. The larger yeah. the diameter, the more important that happens. If you're working on a 36 inch pipe and you've missed lube in one location, that gasket can get hung up as you're trying to compress the, two, the gasket into that gasket pocket. And you won't visually see it, but it'll be enough to cause a leak. It's not hard to do these right. It's easy to do them wrong if you don't pay attention to what you're doing or you've never done it before. And if you've yeah. done small diameter ones, Doing big diameters isn't just jumping up to that size. It, you have to be more careful. The smaller diameters are, are more forgiving than the larger diameters, as some of the cities around here found out when we had to go and do demonstrations on how to do it properly. Once they had the demonstration, everything worked perfectly. So he's putting the so, T-bolts in. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm putting the T-bolts in. You want to make sure your T-bolt is, obviously, the T-portion is going to be against the bell of the MJ fitting. That way it's going to engage when you do go to torque these and you're going to, if you go with the other way, as you've seen, you're, you're going to end up having to try and put wrenches on and more than you need to do. So always have your T-bolt on the body part of the MJ fitting. So I've done that in the back here. We're just going to, we're going to snug them all up as close as we can. And then what you want to do is you want to go star pattern or crisscross as you tighten these just to make sure you get uniform. Uh, Snug it, uh, just snugging it up basically before you do the torque wrench. Star pattern, then once around the world, yeah. right? So once he gets that last one in, there's one other thing. The slide on your screen is going to be relevant for this next part, which you can do at any point in the process. We'll just do it now because the, the slide's up on your screen there. So he's got those snugged up. Yeah. So on the orange one, or on the black one, as, as Craig said, this is a IPS size pipe. So it's the same size as a Schedule 40 or a Schedule 80 pipe. It's not a cast iron pipe OD size. It's that smaller diameter regimen. So on the red ones, it's a little plastic washer in there. For ours, all you need to do is break it out, and now it's gone. Now we can use this on the top part of that. For the orange one, Craig will show you how you have to remove the washer on that one in order to uh, make it so it'll work. Do you want to just remove that? This one right here, we're going to yeah. do that right now. Put this down for a second. So this one, you actually have to take the nut right out. There we go. And 
and in the toolbox we have a wrench if it's too tight sometimes. We took the other so three the out already there. just to save time because, hey, we knew what we were going to be doing here, so we thought we'd we make go. it easier. So we took the washer out, put it back on, now it's ready to be used on the IPS-sized PVC pipe. There we go. So now we'll try to get two more relevant. So I'm going to snug these up, and we're going to do some quick clicking, I guess, right? Get yeah. the base going here. Make sure this is set to 100. Yeah, so you definitely want to make sure you have a torque wrench on site. Torque for your T-bolts is, as I said, crucial. You don't want to under-torque it because then you won't get compression. You don't want to over-torque it because oh. I think two slides from now it'll show you why. And yeah, it helps if you use the right. The right socket always right helps. Right socket. It makes it easier. There you go. Another thing with torquing is you want to make sure you have smooth motion so that you're not jerking it. I'm just snugging it right now. Star pattern or crisscross across ways. Snug this one up here. I'm just gonna keep this from moving. I'm gonna give you some. So now we're pretty much snug, and it's looking. You want to every now and then take a glance, make sure you haven't got any obstructions. You got the right thickness all the way around. Yeah. This one's looking good. Yeah, that's so a big thing. You want to compress that gasket evenly. You don't want to torque these ones all the way down and then have that gland, restrained gland in this case, on an angle like that. You want even compression on your, on your gasket. There we go. And we tried to be sort of smart when we bought the torque wrench and got one with a longer <laughs> handle so that it's, you don't need to be guido to get the appropriate <laughs> torques. No, it may take some time to, to click that too. Yeah. Because of what we're going to be building here, we want to make sure that these, these bottom two, we're going to do them up. We're going to cheat on the top ones and not go all the way necessarily, but these bottom ones, we have to make sure they're secure. Otherwise, our steel toed shoes we're going to be testing out. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right torque on here. Second here. This thing's blocking my. Uh, I'll just. Well, he's checking that. I'll just uh, go through his slides. So yeah, just uh, as he said on here, you got to make sure your gland is facing the right direction. Is the slide you got on there? So you can see up here. This is a gland that pushes into the gasket. So if we're on the bottom one, you've got to make sure that gland is pushing down. The top one, we're going to be pulling it up. But if you put it on this way, there's nothing down here to compress that gasket. So that's why you got to make sure it's in the right direction. For PVC, um, I'm gonna shoot. I'll spin this. See if you guys can if you can zoom in on that a little bit. This is a standard bevel on a PVC pipe. You can see how long that is. It's a 15 degree chamfer. It's what comes from factory on a PVC pipe. It's, it's long. The bigger the diameter of the pipe, the bigger that bevel's going to be. You want to cut that off. The maximum bevel you want on here is about a quarter of an inch. If you have too long a bevel, that uh, insertion depth is only two and a half inches on, a, on an MJ bell. I think it goes up to three and a half on larger diameters. You may not, your gasket might be sitting on that bevel. You won't get compression you won't uh, get, a, get a seal. So you have to make sure that for PVC pipe, you remove that bevel. Just a second, I'll help you. You remove that bevel in order to, uh, to get a seal. And then you just want, as I said, a quarter inch, eighth of an inch, quarter inch. You just need enough chamfer there so that your gasket can slide over it without ripping. There, I'm going once around the whip. Okay, so he's already torqued to... it up. You've torqued it up once then? I've gone crisscross, so now I'm just going to go once around. It hasn't been clicking, mind you. Oh. <laughs> Brand new torque wrench. It better work. <laughs> I'm going to say click, click. Got a 
bit to go. So the biggest thing here is is you want to make sure that your gap there you go. Yeah. Your gap between your fitting and your gland is even all the way around. You do not want it on the angle. You want to you want to have even compression all the way around. So as you can see Craig's got it's fairly straight parallel between here and here. You've got an even gap in there. There you go. There we go. So he did crisscross and now he's just doing one last around the road. If you keep going at this on, on larger diameter, it's, it's even more important. You don't just keep chasing it because gaskets are flexible. He, he's tightening this bolt, this bolt he hit torque. He's tightening this bolt now. That bolt won't, if he goes back, it'll, he'll have to tighten it more to get to that 100 PS or 100 foot pounds again. So you can do crisscross, hit it three to five times if, if you hit it too many times you're just going to keep compressing and pressing that gasket. I was at a city who was doing a 36 inch job. They said they went around the pipe, what was it, 40 times? I oh, think they it just was. kept going back and around. And they kept yeah. going around and around. They, they said they finally hit, but what, what they actually did is they bottomed the, uh, the, the bolts out here. So they were metal to metal. That gasket, if it didn't leak, I'd have been shocked because it was just over compressed. So you, you don't want to just keep chasing. So now what Craig's doing is he wants to make sure that this gland, he can tighten these bolts up by hand and then slowly tighten them up a bit just to center that gland on the pipe. Again, the larger the diameter of the pipe, let me see, get a couple slides. So put the pipe on. We, we said you needed to lubricate. There's We're just going to basically get them to touch each point. Yeah. Uh, Put it in. Before you really start to torque Here's it. the ovality. I'll talk about that in a second. So on the larger diameter pipe, you want to make sure, because you're not working vertical very often, you want to make sure this is centered. This is 12 inch pipe. There's not a lot of play. Trust me, on a 42, 36, 42, 48 inch pipe, there's, there's a lot more play in there. You can use wedges or something, because gravity is going to pull it down. Put a wedge in the top, pull that up. Just so you can see, there you go, it's, it's in there now. If your pipe is, oh, I'll wait till Craig's done this and then we'll do the. Well, I got a few more here. It's gonna take some time to put these in. Okay. You do wanna make sure you put them in. Again, you wanna do it evenly all the way around. You wanna keep that, that restraint centered on the pipe. So I'm touching on these two, just touching. Just so I don't wanna off center it in any way. And these, uh, these wedges are actually installed with a bit of a, a glue to keep them in place while they ship and be handled, which is why I'm popping them in like this. And us as well, the other, other manufacturers for the wedge bolts, they have a break off nut on them. That's a preset torque on that break off nut, so you don't really need a a uh, torque wrench to do this if you're doing it for the first time. You, you can re, you can take it, loosen it off if something went wrong and retighten it. I think it's a uh, 5 8 inch wrench you use to retighten. Then you need a torque wrench and right in the instruction manual to tell you what the torque is. But generally you're just tightening it once. The bolts Craig will show you are just a break off. So we're, now that we've made in contact or engaged the pipe with each one, we're going to go around till they snap. And that's Oop. where you just try to not break your knuckles too. Yeah. And here we go, that's one. Now if for whatever reason you look at this and you say, oh, we didn't do it or we got something in the way, it's not quite even placement, you can <coughs> go back and back these off with a 9 16th. I think it's 9 16th or 5 8 I feel like. Yeah. And then of course you'll have to use a torque wrench to make sure you don't over torque. And in the instruction manuals, it tells you what that is. I believe it's a 75 to 90 foot pound yes. for this, this, for this material size. and this size. So you can see with the break off nuts, it just makes it easy. It's, 
You don't even need to think. You just have to watch your knuckles. And this should be the last one here. But had he not removed the had he not removed the spacers in there, he wouldn't be he'd be breaking those off before they had proper contact with the pipe. Now we're showing pipe ovality. In order for this is just bigger so we can do better demo. In order for this restrained gland to fit onto the pipe, that pipe has to be relatively circle. If it's not circle, I wouldn't be able to fit this on there. With the larger the diameter, the easier it is to be out of round. If it's PVC, you can re-round it by jacking it up, spinning it around, let its own weight kind of do it. For ductile iron pipe, you need to re-round it. But, and, and again, it's jacking. It's, it's whatever the pipe manufacturer recommends. It depends whose pipe it is, what their, their recommendation du jour is. Um, you cannot use a restraint to, to re-round a pipe. You can't force a restraint on there, then twist the wedges down and try to re-round it that way. It's done on occasion. It's not recommended. Re-round it properly before putting it on. Before you go and re-round it though, get a pie tape, measure your OD, make sure it's actually the right OD. Make sure the, the pipe was shipped and it was proper. Then you can do measurements with this. Do a couple cross measurements and see which way it's out around and then place your, your jacks in there appropriately so you're, you're getting your short side and you're, you're rounding it out. Am I gonna go this or over that way? Hmm? I said I'll put the elbow on here at this point. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, get it right here. Yeah, let's just finish the slides off, then we'll do that one. Cause they'll help you. Um, this is just showing your your mechanical joint, which we talked about. Here's where I was saying you need to make sure this is centered in there. Again, you also want to make sure that the pipe is centered in the fitting. If your pipe isn't centered on the fitting, because again, gravity is going to pull it down. Uh, so your pipe's going to be resting on the bottom. If it's, it's going to be compressing that gasket on the bottom, you're going to have more of an annular space on the top. So you want to use wedges, you want to use blocks, you want to use stuff under the pipe or under the fitting to make sure that the pipe and fitting are centered uh, in, the, in the mechanical joint in here. So you want to make sure... I'm going to start with this. Yeah, just a second. You want to make sure that's not sitting like this or like that. You want to make sure it's centered in there so that you're, you're not compressing the gasket one side more than another. Okay, before we get going, let's just finish the slides here. Yeah, sure. How to put it together, like we're showing you. We'd show you the larger diameter ones. It's just more important, it's the same process, it's just a lot more important you follow the same steps to do it because the bigger the diameter, the bigger the problems when it doesn't work and the more likely there is going to be or the easier it is, there will be a problem just because everything's bigger. I said, the city we were out with a couple months ago, they've done up to 12 inch mechanical joints forever. They're great at it, they knew exactly what they're doing. They got to a 36 inch job, did everything the same, and it, they had some leaks, it just didn't work. So with a little bit of training, um, they, they did it, they just paid a little bit more attention to what they were doing, and and everything worked fine. It's just, you have to pay attention. The bigger the pipe, the more attention you have to pay. Mm -hmm. um, went over that, make sure you put it again. This yeah. is what Craig was saying, your bolts have to go in the right direction. If your yeah. T-bolt goes in the wrong way, so your T-bolt's against the red part there, your nut's against the, the fitting, the head of your T-bolt will just spin. The yeah. head of a T-bolt on a fitting, when you put it in, if you zoom in, it gets stuck there. So it, it, it won't spin, so you don't need to wrench on both sides. That's the whole point of the T-bolt. So it, it Yeah, it's it designed to engage the side of if the If uh, you put the nut on this side, that nut you'll try tightening up. It'll, it could get caught up on this chamfer on the fitting right there, mm -hmm. and it won't tighten up. You get a little bit of movement in the soil, goes like that, now you've got a loose fitting, you no longer have your compression. So yeah. you gotta make sure you put it in the right way. Mm -hmm. so, ease, of, ease of installation. Yeah, 
So it's just another one of those. Just make sure you do it right. It's, it's easy to do it right. Bolts, nuts go against flat surfaces. That's the simplest method. Yeah. I said do a star pattern for larger diameter when you're doing the star pattern. And this is what learned from a municipality. They had a great idea. So you can either, like on the picture on that slide, it shows they've numbered the, the holes here. So they'd put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or to make life real easy, and this was on a larger diameter one, they just had a standard strap. So they put the strap around like this, and then they numbered on the strap. So they didn't have to number each restraint all the time. So right on the strap, there's a one, there's a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see, you just bring that, you go from restraint to restraint, and you don't have to number on the restraint every time. It's Working simpler, template. it makes it quick and easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, for smaller diameter ones, it's not as crucial. Once you get up to 24, 30, 36, 48, there's a lot more bolts you need to tighten up. You wanna make sure you don't accidentally forget one. Did I do that one? Did I not do that one? Mm. And on the larger diameter, if you have two people working on it, it's even better. So one can do one, one can do two, and you're, you're pulling it in on that gasket evenly. Because as I said, you wanna make sure your, your joint gap is, is even all the way around. Back pressure, PVC, when you're tightening it up, it can start to push it off, so just make sure you maintain a back pressure on the larger fittings when you're doing it. Torque it up, torque it up, this is what we went over. That's why I say and center it. Um, mm -hmm. If you're underground with, da -da 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 -da, we'll use this one. So, if, yeah, can we yeah. take that off? So if you're, if you're underground, your pipe's going this way, you wanna put your restraint on this way so your bolts are, your, your torque off bolts are easy to access. If you go this way, now you gotta reach underneath the pipe to pull that bolt off. It's doable, but make your life easier, depending how many bolts are on there, oriented in the right direction. This is called our G2 model too. We've got uh, broader wedges for PVC, so you've got less of these to deal with, so it's a quicker, easier install. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you're going to go into that or not. No, no. That's <laughs> good. Jump the gun. No, that was good. Uh, bolt torque, as I said, bolt torque is crucial. It's written there for a reason. More is not better. More, as I said, I, I showed you before, it'll, if, it's, if it's a metal pipe, it'll push it out and break it. If it's plastic pipe, that's not from the wedges. That's from over compressing of the T-bolt or over torquing the T-bolts and over compressing your pipe, you basically made an hourglass out of, that, uh, out of that pipe and it won't work. And that's just because somebody thought it was a really good idea, more is better. More is not better. If it was, we'd just say, torque it till you have the biggest person on the crew can't torque it anymore. <laughs> this is an example of very much what not to do. In this photo, you can see the T-bolts are in backwards. The gland and the fitting are at different, um, they're not aligned straight, they're on an angle, and you can tell that because the T-bolt threads on the bottom have more threads showing. The one on the top, just almost out of view, barely has a thread showing. So that gland is cockeyed. They had to use extra long T-bolts because they used not only, so they got the mechanical joint, fitting, they've got the gasket in the gasket pot there, they've got a standard gland on there, then they've got a restrained gland pushing against the standard gland, which it's just chaos. And then on top of that, they decided to put thrust block in there as well. You don't need thrust blocks and joint restraints. You use one or the other. Belt and suspender is great, but there's absolutely no point. It's a waste of money, it makes going back in to do anything. If there's ever an issue, you need to do a realignment, you need to do something. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta remove more stuff. The whole point of joint restraints is you don't need a thrust block. It replaces the thrust it block. It replaces yeah. it. That testing mm -hmm. is out there. These joint restraints have been around for 40 years. So mm -hmm. it's not new technology. Um, 
Some people just like to use both, but there's absolutely no point. The only time we have seen it where they are, they're waiting for, you know, if, if they are going to be cement thrust blocking and they're not sure about how long it's going to take to cure, they'll do both. We'll see that too. Yeah. But there really is no need for the, th the cement. As Jeff said, the cement thrust block is, uh, is not necessary when you've got any kind of restraint like this on your product. Exactly. And I think that's my last slide there. That is? Oh, no. It's job action. So this is what we're going to be showing you right here in a second. So now we, now we just have video of, of Craig working away. All right. So okay. we're going to switch over to this side here. We'll take that fitting off. I'll move this. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the, uh, the ductile pipe into a standard yeah, I'm just gonna take this mechanical off joint right T. Let that just the way it is. Well, the, the gasket needs to be pushed up. Oh, I see. There we go. Try not to block what we're doing here. So we already put the gasket on there last night and lubed everything up just to make so. it a little quicker. So we're going to plant this in. We've lubed, lubed the fitting, lubed the gasket. Here I can stand the on this pipe. side. And we just want to get a nice snug seat. We're going to come down with our 4300 again. And we're going to leave the washers in this time because it's cast iron OD pipe. Yeah. There you go. Make sure you've got your direction in the right way, the gland going in, pushing that in. And what we're going to do is get our bolts. On, on a standard pipe installation, you're going to have 20 foot pieces of pipe. So what you're going to do on those is you slide the gland on first, then you put your gasket on. Um, because we're doing it vertical, which is not a standard installation, just easier to put that on. We don't have to slide it down very far. There we go. We're going to try and shore this all up. We're using the stainless steel ones with the uh, coated nuts. And this one here. And we're basically going to do the same kind of installation we did last time on the one on, the, on my right here. Snug them all up, get it uh, uniform, get it looking pretty level and straight. Star pattern, we're going to start torquing it down. Okay. Second, I just gotta. There you go. Yeah, you can do that side. Yeah. Which one did you do? That one? Yeah. Back there? Okay. So, a little teamwork makes it go a little quicker. Yeah, I just looked at the clock. We're getting close to 11 30. We're gonna try and snap this one together quickly. Yeah, because it's the next part that we really wanna show you. Now, I'll come this way so you can see it. Did you click click on your side or just snug it? I just snugged. So you snug those, I'm just going to get the, uh, these going a bit. So you can see that T-bolt engaging the side there and it just makes it for an easy installation on the one side. Just snugging them down at this point. Like I said, every now and then glance at it, make sure nothing has changed in the alignment of this product. I'm blocking it, right? Yeah, you are. <laughs> The next part is going to be more crucial. We don't block oh, it. That was that good. One. That's okay because we're going to start clicking them now. Yeah, so, so we're going to go crisscross for these. There we go. There we go. Nice smooth. We'll get Jeff to do the back one here. Perfect. Yep. So that one's engaged that way. Another socket here. I know. I got another, I got a wrench in the toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're just tightening it up again, just to get these in line. And as he said, sometimes you can do this by hand. Sometimes you have to do it. That's not good, is it? With with a wrench. Um, when, you're, when you're tightening this up and getting them in contact, you're also centering it on the pipe at the same time. Yeah. There you go. And then once they're all tight, all centered, so you're centered on the pipe, then you go around and break them off. Yeah. 
cover the label so we don't have to pay for advertising. It's that one that's red and white. No one will know. And this one we're just going to snug up so that we can get to the next part. As I said, we'll, normally you'd go and break these off, but we're sturdy enough here now that for what we're doing, we're not pressure testing this. We're not, this is just demo. So normally you'd, those are all against there. You'd tighten it up now and you'd do these till they break off. That's right, yeah. But so that we don't run out of time. There we go. So we're going to be going into a ductile <laughs> iron fitting from a ductile iron pipe. We're going to use the ductile iron restraint. And you can, yeah. And like Jeff said, you want to orient this so you can have access to those T-bolts. And because we lubed this up before, it's already nicely lubricated. Yeah, it should just pop right over. Yep. Perfect. This one. This is a standard asphaltic coated fitting. Pop it on. Get the nuts. And we'll try to stay out of the video camera range. Just oh give boy. us a sign if we're blocking too much. Okay. So what we're going to do is bring that restraint up. T-bolts will drop through the top so that we got the T's against the body of the MJ fitting. If it's 90. We've got to make sure it's fairly 90, otherwise our contraption here won't quite work with the pre-cut pipe. Get that on there. All we need is one. And then the next, the, the next one is what, what we really want to show you, because this is very similar to what we've already done, but we'll show you how the, how the MJ100 works quite nice. There's that. Okay, and then you can get on the next one. So again, this we're going to tighten it just for safety for us. We're not going to go through the whole thing. We'll, we'll tighten it to the 100 foot pounds and then the wedges will tighten it so they're snug so that it holds everything nice and tight for us. There we go. So you can start on that one, torquing it. I'll, uh, you got that one? Yeah. Well, now are we going to want to, we're going to want to line this up so we don't want to go too tight right now. To make it, sure we it, come it's already it. 90. No, it, it'll you be good. Okay. So if there was audience members here, which would have been ideal, we'd have you guys coming up and taking turns doing it so everyone knew what they were doing. Oh, good. I was going to ask you a question. Okay. When painting for, on a fork wrench, is, I was always taught to zero it and readjust to the new setting. Is that your common practice? I would say, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Um, you should. The big thing with a torque wrench, you should always bring it back to the lowest setting when you're not using it. Otherwise, the springs can get out of whack. I mean, you don't really need to zero it in between, but it's 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 not a bad practice. But when it is in storage, you are supposed to bring them down to uh, your lowest torque setting. Yeah, yeah. The bigger thing, <laughs> as as the one audience member we have said, is uh, keep, keep it out of the mud. Keep it clean. This is a precision, or the most precision tool you will have on the job site. So keep it clean, keep it good. If your torque wrench isn't, isn't working, you're, you're not gonna get your right torques. And as I said, for gaskets and stuff, that's a very crucial number. Have you tightened every other one up already? They're all snug, I'm just And you can sure. see again, we're making sure that we have even, even amounts all the way around. And you don't want to jerk a torque wrench, because if you jerk a torque wrench, it will prematurely click, click. So you want to just even pulling on it, and then you'll hear a click eventually. Okay, I'm just getting get ready for our next one here. I'm just putting some gaskets on that MJ100. There we go. Yeah, so what Craig did is he lubricated the gasket and the restraint 
and we put the gaskets onto this MJ100 right here. And that way it's ready to, to install into the fittings we're about to do. And what we can do is we'll spin this 90 degrees so that they can see on the camera. We weren't sure how the camera setup was gonna be, so we will modify this slightly so that you guys can actually see what we're doing in a second here. I said, hopefully next year live audience. Get some helpers with us. And then we have we some helpers. We lost our workforce with ServeGood. Yep. Exactly. I said, instruction manuals come with in the packs. So like this is an MJ bolt pack, it comes with the bolts, comes with the gasket. We took the gasket out already. So it'll come with your bolts, it'll come with your gasket in there and it'll come with instructions. MJ adapter, so the, for the series 100 or the foster adapter, it comes with gaskets, comes with the bolts and we'll show you the magic it comes with as well. So how did you want to do this? Let's try this. spinning this 90. Let me just get rid of this. Like this? No, no, other, oh, six one half dozen, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna go, you can zoom in on this, eh? So they can see, okay. Ready, one, two, three. There we go. All right, we're gonna do that one there. Can you see this or is that white pipe in the way? Okay, so we're gonna do this now. This is where our MJ100, we're gonna connect our asphaltic fitting with our zinc fitting and just do a quick S turn here. So we need some nuts. So we, we, need, we need a few things here. Now, as we said, because we're going fitting to fitting, we have no flat surface to go against. So what we're gonna do, you wanna open that? Yeah. I'll I got this. On, on the one side, we're gonna put a T-bolt in. On the other side, there's these adapters. What it does, it's got a flat face on one side and rounded on that side. That round allows you to go over the chamfer on the fitting, on the uh, fitting there and give you a flat surface for that nut to go on. You can zoom in on it after we have it uh, installed so you, you'll be able to see what that looks like. Because without that, your nut would get hung up on that bit of the fitting there. So you need these, this comes in the kit. It also comes with longer T-bolts because you're going through a whole fitting. Okay. Let me just put those easily accessible because we're holding this up in the air while we're doing this. We're just gonna get one started, I guess. Go this way, I can put this on over here. Yeah, like this. Six and a half dozen. Got that. Okay. It's got the rounded edge and the lugs pointing inwards. Oh boy, we're gonna get that going. I swear these gloves hinder more than they help sometimes. I'd have gone the other way, so we have it here. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Let's do the next one that way. Yeah. So we're going to modify that bolt because that'll work, but it's easier if we put the bolt in this side. Uh, it won't make a difference, actually. This side, it won't make a difference. This side, because of the proximity, I should have put it the other way. Yeah. And you slide this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, See, an engaged. operator should appreciate this. The uh, manufacturers actually do this every now and then, not just you guys. <laughs> Go this way on this one. We gotta get the gas, the socket on it. Lugs. Go. And because you're going to two MJ fittings, you can put these bolts either direction on either one, whichever way is the easiest to get your socket on to the, uh, in. To the nut after the fact. That. Not. Oh, that right. I think it's six one half. I think so. Yeah. Doesn't matter then. Yeah, Whichever way is easier for you. Okay. I'll get that one started. There we okay. Go. It's gonna change this one around so we see if we can even get the socket on there. Oh, this is where you just have to. We can probably get a socket. I'm 
I'm just making sure we got these properly lined up as we tighten them. These, these can swivel if you don't pay attention. You want to make sure you're engaging them correctly. I said vertical is definitely a lot more challenging to put this on. But you can see two things here. You can see the T-bolt on this side is hitting that inside of the fitting so it's not spinning. And you can see where that spacer allows the nut to go. Okay, those should be handy. Get them all snugged up here. Perfect. Okay. So you can see with the MJ, the, with two fittings in this spacer, how quick and tight the joint has now become without any use for restraints or spool pieces or any other kind of length of pipe in the middle just to make the quick change. Yeah. So what we do is we torque this again up to 100 foot pounds. I think it's 100 to 120 foot pounds for this yeah. diameter. We set it at the 100 just for simplicity here. I think we got the wrong size socket on there. Oh, there we go. Didn't you make a comment about that earlier to me? Yeah. <laughs> so make sure you use the right size socket. It makes life easier. But uh, so we'll snug this up a bit, and then we'll just quickly show you the PVC one. We won't necessarily install it all the way because running out of time. Running out of time here, and that'll finish her off nicely. So we're just snugging it up, right? right? Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. Twenty minutes. Okay. Well, we have time, but you might get really bored. So we're just going to snug this up so that it's safe to do the next do process. The next part, yeah. We really don't like, fittings aren't light. They're not this size, <laughs> this and that heavy, but it still, still gives you a black toe. Go. We haven't done this part either, but that's another thing where you'd send it apart. Yeah, we, just so we can reuse these in the next demo, generally you, you that's no, it's the other side socket. You, you tighten that up, that again would break off, but we don't need to do that. We're just doing it here. In a real installation, you bring those to break off. Same if thing. there was audience members, we'd let you break them all off. But we go. because we're going to reuse this at another one, we'll save that so other people can have fun. We've done it enough. We don't need to do it. Okay. okay. Then for the PVC, we are going to. We, are we going to put the elbow on first? That's yeah. We, the, no. This. No. We need to put this in. Th this is where it gets tricky. This is, again isn't a reality installation because. We just have to make this work. So you'd put your, your restraints onto the pipe because you can't do it after. One end goes into there. Just like that. There we go. And again, you just tighten everything up. As yeah. That's in there. Yeah. Boom, boom. Put this one in. Perfect. And the gasket's not on far enough, but. No. <laughs> well, we should have bottomed this one out here. Yeah. Maybe push it back. Push the gasket on. Okay. That's why they don't pay us to do the uh, work on the in the field. So we've got this one bottomed out on this side. We're going to get this side going. And yeah, we haven't done this installation before, so. Here we go. No, we gotta cut that pipe for next time. Okay. So in theory, just assume that pipe was cut to the right length. We didn't bring cutters in here. The hotel wouldn't want us cutting it anyway. <laughs> um, pop it on, put it together. But again, all that's, all, all the rest of them is showing is putting that gasket into the gasket pocket, tightening this up, and break off nuts. All but the same principles, basically. Yeah, we're going to go in exactly. with our T-bolts against the body right the way through, snug it down, star pattern, make sure we fully engaged, and then we just go till we touch on the, res on the uh, torque bolts, and then you just torque, 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 and then torque your bolts afterwards. Yeah. And because this is C900 pipe, we're leaving the spacers in. PVC pipe, they're red, red, or orange. Yeah. Ductile iron, they're black or orange. So here we go. That's it. Any questions? We're going to start tearing her apart in a tiny bit here, but uh, 
We're gonna take this part apart just for safety yeah, right now. Take that piece off. I'm not sure what we did there, but no, we need to cut that piece. Miscalculation on, on the length. Yeah, because I'm all the way in on this side. So yeah, so we we tried to plan ahead a little, and apparently we should have put it all together, but uh, it was close. <laughs> so thank you for uh, attending. Hopefully, see you in person next year. There we go. Any questions? No. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm Craig Sloan and Jeff Phillips from Star Pipe Products. Is there any questions that now would be a great time to type them on in? I can take these off, I guess. Yeah. While we're, um, we're waiting done. for any questions, do you want me to move? We're working on need. Um, just thank you guys so much. This is. Together? Right. <laughs> I should have been wearing my Fitbit. <laughs> have it on properly? Am I good? Pardon? Sorry. I'll just, uh, can you just repeat the yeah, question? What, what amount of deformation are you allowed on a C900? C900. With, with wedge, so so what what you're asking is how much can they jab into the pipe, basically? Yeah, because what so C900 standard allows for a 10% gouge, which would be the same as the amount the wedge is going in, without adversely affecting the pipe. So right in the C900 standard, it says 10%. Now these are not gonna bite in 10%, um, unless you go a full reaction that's just some catastrophic event and it really reacts. 10% is a lot of wall depth you're digging in. But but you are allowed a 10% gouge in C900. Any more questions? Any more questions coming in for um, these guys on pipe insulation, mechanical joints? Anything. Anything? <laughs> exactly. If not, we're available anytime. You can track us down, I'm sure, to ask ask any questions. And we'll have your contact info available to all the delegates. There you go. So, um, yeah, so if you got questions later, just let us know. Great. There we go. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you guys so much. This has been excellent. And um, to everybody at home, it's uh, lunch break. Make your sandwich, heat up your leftovers. Um, uh, so lunch is from 12 to 12.30. There's going to be an awards presentation, um, and it'll be on this stream or all the streams from 12.30 to 1. And uh, returning on the transport stream from 1 to 1.45, we're going to have Dave Brewer presenting a complete utility locating system presentation. Thank you. And I just have um, a, a little present for your efforts oh. from the EOCP. Oh. Keep your lunches cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you.